And we've uh, done our rants on uh, neoliberalism and, and the uh, two Santa Claus theory, the GOP tax scam, where Republicans scream about the debt and the deficit whenever Democrats are in control and run up the debt and the deficit whenever Republicans are in control. And this has been very intentional ever since 1974 when Jude Wininsky published his two Santa Claus uh, theory suggestion about how the Republican Party can achieve power in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, but moving on from that, I, want, I wanted to get, get in Tom Perez. He's the chair of the Democratic National Committee, the DNC, former U.S. Secretary of Labor. The website, Democrats.org. You can tweet him at Tom Perez, T-O-M-P-E-R-E-Z. Uh, Secretary Perez, welcome back. Tom, it's always great to be with you and all your listeners. It is great having you with us. So there's so much going on. Um, <laughs> Missouri just flipped a, a red district blue. Tell us about this. Oh, hats off to uh, folks in Missouri. It was a great win. Uh, it, it, again, uh, it, it's, it's the same formula, Missouri and elsewhere. You feel good candidates. You talk about the issues that people care about, education, jobs, health care. You organize, you organize, you organize. Hats off to the, the Democratic Party. Hats off to, to a spectacular candidate. And by the way, you saw we did this, you know, this happened in uh, Wisconsin. A couple weeks ago, a uh, state Senate seat in a beat red Trump country. Uh, again, uh, the, the candidate is uh, she is a medical examiner, and she talked with great passion about how the opioid epidemic is tearing apart uh, her community. And again, Donald Trump won that district handily, and Democrats won. And, and it's, this is, these are not one offs anymore, Tom. Yeah. We saw it last year in Oklahoma. We saw it in Florida. I'm, I'm in Florida right now. There's a, a special election coming up in uh, House District 72. We have a great candidate. Again, it's a Republican district. Uh, but uh, I think we have a great chance of pulling off an upset. And, and the formula is the same. And, and we saw what happened in Alabama, Virginia, and elsewhere. When we're united, we're at our best. And when we organize and, and we articulate our values clearly, you know, health care, for Democrats is a right for all, not a privilege for a few. At Oklahoma, where I was a couple weeks ago, Tom, it really blew me away. There are tens of thousands of youngsters uh, in Oklahoma and, frankly, in, uh, in Kansas who go to school four days a week. And they go to school four days a week because the Republican leadership there cut the budget, not to the bone, but through the bone. Wow. And that is such a morally bankrupt policy, not to mention... Uh, economic uh, short-sightedness. You, you don't educate your children to be the leaders of the future. How are you going to punch your ticket to the middle class uh, when you're not getting that educational foundation? That's why Democrats are winning. We're running everywhere. We're winning everywhere. And uh, now what we have to do in 2018 is, is scale it. And, and you, you, know, you talk so much and so eloquently about the moral bankruptcy of, of this administration, and, and it is spot on because um, the party of Lincoln is officially dead, and it's really been replaced by the, the party of Trump and you know, the party in which the rule of law has, has really become the rule of Trump, and, and, and a party in which the people like Ryan and, and McConnell, you know, we tend to focus a lot of attention on Trump, but they are equally complicit because you know, Dr. King, as you know, once said, to ignore evil is to become an accomplice to evil. And they have ignored so many remarkably un-American things that this president has done because their goal is to remake the social compact as we know it. And they see a willing participant in Donald Trump. So they're going to put a sock in their mouth about people like uh, a Porter at the White House who's uh, beating his ex-wives, people like Steve Wynn, who's a serial misogynist. Instead, they want to support the likes of Roy Moore in Alabama and, and, and you, you, Joe Arpaio getting in the race in Arizona. Well, I it, the history with him. It's and also it's, becoming it's, the, party, the party of the Koch network and the Mercers. I mean, it's this, this, the Republican Party is so billionaire funded. This is the one. It makes me crazy that the media never talks about this. They're, they sit around and go, well, gee, why do these Republicans all deny climate change? Why do these Republicans all, you know, and, and it's because they've got a bunch of billionaires money. running the, running the <laughs> show. Yeah, follow the money. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. It's, uh, a question. I mean, you look at the EPA. You look at the EPA administrator, and just follow the money with him. Yeah, and you see exactly Zinke. why 
Uh, Mick Mulvaney? Uh, no, I'm talking about, uh, I mean, not just Vinky, but the, uh, the EPA administrator. Go back to his uh, days in Oklahoma, and you will see uh, a very clear uh, <laughs> link between uh, him and, and Koch brothers' interests and all the attacks on uh, environmental protections, which are really public health protections. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've got this government shutdown vote uh, that looks like it's going to happen, this uh, the treaty that was worked out uh, you know, between Chuck Schumer and, and Mitch McConnell. And uh, yesterday, Speaker Pelosi stood for eight hours uh, without even a bathroom break, 77 years old. That's, you know, she's, she is such a fighter. Um, she stood there and just went on and on, you know, uh, in favor of uh, the Dreamers. Why, uh, a tactical question here. It seems, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, how would the Republicans play this? And, uh, or for that matter, how, you know, what's the best way to play this? It seems to me that if, if uh, the, the Republicans as well as the Democrats both want this, this, this budget deal, this, this two-year funding to happen, um, even though it's jacking the deficit up a trillion dollars, which will give the Republicans more ammunition to cut Medicare and Medicaid down the road. But, but nonetheless, everybody wants this to pass. Why not, in the House of Representatives anyway, simply say, we will not vote for this, because it won't pass in the House because of the Cokehead Caucus, the, the so-called Freedom Caucus. Um, why not simply say, we will not vote for this unless, Paul Ryan, you uh, commit to holding a vote on DACA, even, you know, because they're, the DACA will pass. I mean, you're going to get enough Republican votes and all the Democratic votes, and the only thing that's blocking it is Paul Ryan. Why not hold the budget deal hostage to that? Well, I think, actually, there are a number of Democrats who are doing just that, and obviously I'm not a member of the House. If I were a member of the House, that's exactly what I would do. It, it, it's one thing to have McConnell commit to a vote on a clean dream act in the Senate, but, you know, I've been to that movie. I was working in the administration in 2014, 2013, when we passed a bipartisan immigration reform bill that was comprehensive in the Senate. And uh, then Speaker Boehner didn't have the guts to allow it to come up because there was a hostage taking by the far right. And, uh, and if I were a member of the House, that's exactly what I would fight for. Uh, if you have a straight up or down vote in today's U.S. House of Representatives on a Clean Dream Act, it would pass. I have no doubt about it, Tom. Yep. Yep. And we've got to keep fighting. I, what Nancy Pelosi did yesterday was moral leadership. Uh, that was remarkable. And uh, for me, I just have to say that this issue is so very personal. Uh, I, I, I've worked with so many dreamers over the years and continue to do so. Uh, I mean, dreamers are fighting for our military. Dreamers were first responders in Texas, at least one made the ultimate sacrifice, saving folks. They are our, our teachers. They are our health care professionals. And uh, they're, they're our country. They're our, they are America. And, you know, the, we, we have to stand up for them. This is um, the, the continuing hostage-taking with dreamers is, is just so offensive to me personally. That's why, you know, frankly, again, I, I, I speak as Tom Perez uh, concerned U.S. citizen here, I, I think we should, um, we, we need to demand a vote from Paul Ryan, and we need to continue to use every leverage that we have uh, to do so. That's what I would do, and I, I can't help but be amused by the Freedom Caucus in the House. They've suddenly become deficit hawks today yeah. on the budget after, after passing uh, the most reckless and irresponsible tax cut uh, to help wealthy people and large corporations, now suddenly they're getting religion on, uh, well, maybe uh, spending money on opioid addiction and spending money on uh, Puerto Rican uh, relief when 40% of the island still doesn't have electricity. Uh, oh, my God, we can't do that. That would raise the deficit. Give yeah. a break. Uh, so I hope we keep fighting. I hope, I hope, I, I think Nancy Pelosi embodied uh, everything I love about the Democratic Party and what she did, and I and, and really the bottom line, Tom, is what we have to do out there, and this is why I'm down here in Florida today, the, the long-term solution here is we need more Democrats in the House and we need more Democrats in the Senate. We need more Democrats in state legislatures and state secretaries of state, and, uh, governors, attorneys general, you know, treasurers, et cetera, up and down the ticket. The more Democrats we have, the more good things we can do for people. That, to me, a fundamental problem, and I, I, I applaud the likes of Dick Durbin and 
Nancy Pelosi and others who've been fighting for these dreamers, they need reinforcement. Yep. And that's what I'm yep. trying well to do. Well said. We have, uh, we, we have 45 seconds till we hit a hard break here. What can people do to help out? Organize, organize, organize. I was down here in Florida yesterday talking to uh, an indivisible chapter, and they're out knocking on doors. They're out leading with their values. Go to Paul Ryan and tell him, uh, you, you need to bring this up for a vote, up or down. The democratic process, just like we did in health care a year ago, we've got to keep the pressure up, and we've got to be organizing all over this country to elect Democrats up and down the ticket. And I've been encouraging people to show up at their local Democratic Party and volunteer to be precinct committee per persons. That's, that's high on your list, I'm guessing. That Missouri, hats off to the Democratic Party there, Stephen Weber. Uh, same thing in uh, Wisconsin and elsewhere. Uh, Martha, uh, Wisconsin, they are kicking butt. And we're going to keep doing it at scale in 2018. There you go. Secretary, former U.S. Secretary of Labor Tom Perez, now the chair of the DNC. Democrats.org, the website. You can tweet him at Tom Perez. Uh, Secretary, thanks so much for being with us today.